Yeah. Hello, everyone. It's the time of year when our minds turn to the evidence we have of student learning. What do final exams mean during a pandemic? <laughs> Headache? <laughs> you may rethink your finals under the current unprecedented pandemic situation. And Judy, please click on the next one as well. There is an animation. And raise a question about whether you use your approach is the best one in the first place. Is a multiple choice exam the best way to measure learning? If not, what other options are available? And then yes, do I have to give a student more flexibility? Then when it comes to grading, it's gonna mean a lot of work for them, but would it be worth it? You can click on the next one. It's a more, yeah. And then the final one. You may have a lot of questions and challenges and concerns about your final exam. Today, we'll explore various assessment methods, different strategies that can be implemented online. We are super excited to have you here and excited about the conversation we'll get to have today. So, Manuel. So, I just uh, want to take a moment to, uh, to do a territory uh, acknowledgement. Um, so today I'm coming from the uh, Merskram and city territory. Uh, I live on the uh, UBC campus, which for centuries has been a place of learning for the Merskram people. Uh, and I usually share this image with, with the participants just to explain that, you know, when I when I walk on campus and I see the, the totem poles, it means a lot to me because I'm, as, I, as you can hear, I'm coming from a different country. I'm coming from France originally. So um, it allows me to really you know, understand all the history, all the background of, of this particular place and really understand that, you know, there are a lot of things uh, happening, a lot of uh, a lot of cultural elements that I may not be aware of. So uh, a totem pole like this one, the reconciliation a totem pole is actually quite important to me because it, it is a way for me to fit that gap that I may not know about all the history behind. So I just want to take this moment to kind of always reflect back on, you know, where we sit and uh, the, 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 the importance of always acknowledging where we're coming from. Next slide. Judy, yeah. Oh, introduction. My name is Suna Jo. I'm a faculty, a CTLT faculty liaison for the Soros Group business. Judy, you're muted. <laughs> so my name is Judy Chan. I work as an education consultant at the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology. I'm also a faculty liaison with the faculty of land and food systems. And I also taught in the summer. And hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Myers, and I'm the faculty liaison, CTLT faculty liaison in the Faculty of Arts. Right, and uh, Manuel Diaz, I work at CTLT. I'm also a faculty liaison with the uh, Faculty of Science. Uh, so we just want to welcome uh, to this session today. Um, so to get started, we, uh, we you should have a little uh, activity to kind of get to know you a little bit better and, you know, see how you're feeling, you know, approaching, uh, you know, your final exam. So I have this, this little uh, poll question that should just pop up on your screen right now where we just want to know how you're feeling about your final exam. So if you're ready to go, if you're terrified, excited, or you know, maybe some of you don't even want to think about it next, until next term. So I'll just give you a few seconds and then uh, we can uh, share the results. So I have two more voting. All right, one more. All right, thank you. So we have <laughs> the perfect distribution. <laughs> uh, so some of you are ready to go. One of you is terrified. One of you is excited. And one of you is actually don't even think about it until next term. So we have a very good uh, distribution of, uh, of participants uh, today. But uh, you know, feel free to kind of always ask questions. We're going to be also using the, the, the chat right, right now, actually. Um, so uh, we can actually get to know your expectations a little bit better. So, great. Yuri, hoping to find a way to balance between keeping academic integrity, assessing students' learning. All right, so I can see academic integrity is a big concern for you guys today. Andrea, security, open book, closed books. Aha, okay, that's a good question. 
All right. So rest assured, we will be talking about all these different elements, uh, maybe not in really, really detail, but at the end, we'll, we'll be making sure to talk about the key considerations for you. Um, so certainly talking about security and exam integrity, that's, that's a big thing. Uh, maybe another another question for you in the chat. I have three. Maybe somebody else. I might be missing. Uh... Well, Grace, you already mentioned. Okay. Yeah, I think we can move on to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, so we we do have. Um... Okay, thank you, Andrea, for Proctorio. We'll be talking about Proctorio in a little bit, so I'll, I'll be giving you a sense of you know how it is being used. Uh, so basically, by the end of the session, uh, you should be able to choose one assessment strategy that can be applied online. So from what I, I can see, some of you already have an idea, but you're really interested in, in the uh, integrity of your exam. Applying various design strategies to design an assessment that can help maintain exam integrity. So you know, we've already anticipated this. And then identify effective techniques to assess student learning online. So we're trying to kind of cover all these things today uh, and really make sure that you live with something uh, you know, that can be applied right away online. So this is just a list of, there's many different options you can use for um, delivering your online exam. And here's a list of some of the options that we've heard from instructors that they're using. So as many of you have indicated that you're doing like kind of a traditional timed um, exam using Canvas quizzes, um, multiple choice questions or short answer or essay questions. Um, take home exams are another option that a lot of, it, in certain contexts work well, um, or a combination of take home and synchronous exam. So I think similar to uh, what Andrea is describing where there's an open book component and then a closed book component within the same exam, you could also do a similar thing where you have a take home open book take home component for like a case study or something like that, that you want students to have a little bit more time or a writing exercise, and then a timed synchronous exam. Um, similarly, the, the in tray box exercises, if you're doing something like a case study, um, some instructors have found that distributing the case study ahead of time for students to look at um, and review and analyze on their own before coming to the exam is an effective way because um, when students get the case study right in the exam, sometimes there can be a lot of anxiety and they're rushing to try and understand it. That um, if, if they're given it ahead of time, they can take a little bit more thoughtful approach and then the questions um, that they ask about it, the students won't know those, but they'll have a chance ahead of time to study the actual cases. Um, oral exams, and then we've just learned about recorded oral exams with an invigilator, which is a new one that I hadn't heard about before, um, case studies and two-stage exams. So these are just some of the options um, that you can use if you're concerned about whether um, the multiple choice timed exam will work for you and assess the student learning the way you would like. There are options for you. And so um, if you have questions, bring those up and we can go through uh, some of these a little bit more detail later. But, um, we just wanted to kind of get some ideas out there to get you thinking about what's available to you. Go ahead, Judy. All right, so I guess that's me. Um, so in, in the next little while, we, we're gonna have some uh, interesting discussions on on different uh, different elements uh, you know regarding uh, online exams so to help you with this we we've identified an interesting article written by uh, Laura Keelan who is a nursing educator from northern Ontario and what she's been doing is just sharing her experience designing or redesigning her online exam or her exam to make it fit for the online delivery and she's been giving Ten tips to kind of you know explain a little bit the the process she's been going through to kind of really design something that makes sense for an online environment really um, so she's been really considering you know integrity which is also a big concern for you guys and and she's also coming from a, an accredited program so the integrity of the exam is key so that's the reason why you know she's studying with this and then giving design tips and uh, talking about authenticity fairness flexibility and choice choice again, 
uh, the fact that students matter in the process. So really trying to kind of have something that is uh, targeted, targeted to their specific needs. The aspect of trust, uh, approachability and well-informed. Because we don't have that much time today, we only have 35 minutes left. We, we've been saving you from going through a long list of items. So basically what we've done is identify four of them. So I think is the next slide. So uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time on, in talking about integrity. Uh, so we're going to be uh, discussing what we mean by integrity and then having two or three guiding questions to kind of help you think about, okay, how does you know integrity look like in my particular context? And then talking about design, we can also talk about students matter. So really having a, a learner-centered approach in, in the way we design exams and talk about approachability and also what it means by that. And before we start, I just want to make sure that we have enough time at the end to adjust some of the questions that you talked about that you asked earlier. So um, please allow us to go through the slide and then we will have time for some discussion. So integrity, um, I, I would like to encourage that we talk about integrity throughout the term. Um, so for Anita who's planning to teach in term two, so make sure you start talking about it earlier. But now, if you're only thinking about it now because it's a final exam, it's not too late. Start having an open discussion with your students about what integrity means to us as a human being, as a professional. And um, so it's like a piggy promise, a project of, um, there are examples that we can follow. Um, before we do that, I'm using the slide to help me. We, we also need to make sure that what is allowed for our students to do during the final exam and what is not allowed. Um, because we all teach different courses, everyone has a slightly different definitions of integrity. Some of you are going to be doing open books. Some of you is closed book. But what is open book and what is closed book? What is that one page of note? How big is the page? How much information? You need to have a detailed description for what you consider to be allowed and what is not allowed for your course, for your students, because each of us is different. We set different guidelines. So it's important to tell, to let the student know. And we, we know that integrity is important for all of our assignments, but for our final exam, this is how we are going to deal with it and explain it to the students. Um, a very simple way of dealing with integrity for an exam or assessment is that we will put a, a pledge in the beginning of your quizzes, exam, and you will say, as a student at UBC, I solemnly pledge that I promise I'm not sharing. So there are different examples. Um, people, there are some standards you can use from the link here. There's also engineering specific or anything that you will use in pharmacy or in education that you would like your future engineers, your pharmacists, your future teachers will be able to say, um, to, to the future clients and the professions. Um, very simple way, that could be a statement that you put at the beginning of your final exam. We've seen people who ask them to say, I agree with the statement above, like yes or no, I agree or disagree. I always wanted to have that discussion. What if the students say disagree, right? <laughs> You're basically forcing them to say agree. And I'm thinking if I'm going to use it myself, I may actually ask them to do a few in the blank. A little bit of a customized, personalized, so then the students are actually going to think about that. Not just, okay, I'll do it, but actually make them do something about it. So my question to you is, I, I want it I, because I'm going to change... Um, I'm going to ask you the questions. How does it going to work in your profession? What does it mean when you design your final exam and your challenge and concerns that you still may have? Okay. Um, feel free to type your questions and challenge when you are using this um, in integrity pledge. And um, I'm going to move on and um, have more time for discussion later, perhaps. Okay. Manuel. 
Oh, I thought we would be spending a little bit more time in the uh, integrity piece. Uh, so, Andrea, just uh, put the link in the in the chat regarding the uh, the final exam uh, integrity pledge. Um, so, the design aspect. So, in 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 this uh, in this place, we just want to talk about if you're planning, depending on what kind of exam you're planning, is trying to have something that talks a bit more about uh, the uh, the uh, higher level skills that you'd like to measure and not necessarily the information that you expect students to recall. So trying to have something a little bit more complex. Um, so in, in, in this particular case, um, the uh, Laura was kind of explaining, well, you know, having high level type of questions that require a little bit more thinking or a little bit more time instead of having, I would say simple level, multiple choice questions. So that was kind of a strategy that you really try, try to kind of, um, you know, share with, with us basically. So um, I don't know if you've heard, but we, we tend to refer to the Bloom's taxonomy um, when we try to kind of come up with higher level thinking type of questions. Um, so, if, you know, you have six different levels of complexity, I would say. So um, if, you, if you look a little bit at the type of exam that you have, really think about, uh, you know, if you could change some of the, 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 the questions that you have and really trying to kind of measure very specific skills, maybe more complex skills, uh, so that, that, that sort of things. So the design exams, not necessarily focusing on the recall of information, but really the application of knowledge, maybe. Uh, creating questions that mostly require students to use more than one piece of information. So trying to have them, uh, again, look for resources, use a little bit more creative, uh, creative thinking in their, in their approach. Uh, which is something that we, we could do. And, and the design, the reason why we, we emphasize on design is that you know, sometime when you, you, know, you have something online, you may go a little bit higher than what, you know, what you've been doing before. Uh, so based on that particular design aspect, you know, think about you know, how would this uh, influence the design of your final exam? What are the things that you could pot potentially change, assuming some of you, you know, uh, already have, let's say, a, a quiz that is you know, having multiple choice questions. I have to, you know, what are the things that you could change in those multiple choice questions to kind of really measure something a little bit more specific maybe? And, and what could be the challenges or concerns you know, taking this approach, you know, maybe a concern around the time that we would take to retake, you know, to change some of those things, or always make sure that, you know, you're still measuring what you're supposed to measure. Um, so the, the second piece with the design, and when we talk about assessment is always make sure there is a good alignment with your learning objectives. Um, so I, I, I can imagine for, uh, I think, Andrea, you're coming from an accred accredited program, um, you always have to make sure that there is a clear alignment with your, uh, uh, I would say, program outcomes that, you know, you're measuring what you're supposed to measure. Uh, but I, I would say it's always good to kind of take a, more like a reflective approach and look back at what you currently have and what are the things that you could potentially change. So then it's not necessarily uh, uh, just recall of information. So that's the, that's the reason why we really focused on design on this aspect. So you could use the chat if you want to share a little bit about you know what you're planning to to do in terms of design. Uh, but um, if I can give you a, a tip of advice, I would just say that takes time, you know, to rethink a little bit, you know, what you've done, or you know, change some of the questions that you have, or even the entire type of exam you've you've decided to do. Maybe you realize that's not necessarily a good fit for online. So there are a lot of things that fall under this uh, design umbrella. That's for sure. Great, thank you, Judy. So I think we can move on to the next, yeah. Yeah, student matters. Well, for final exams, it seems like a majority of participants today are interested in more um, security, but I think, uh, and also you may focus on what is the most accurate way to assess a student knowledge, which is very important. But I think uh, during this unprecedented time, pandemic situation, more importantly, students need to know that you care about them, not only their success. So I think uh, this is really important, um, educators to demonstrate the professional caring 
So be kind, pay attention, tell stories, invite stories, show you care, don't be afraid of love. This is a quote I saw from the article. So article is based upon the nursing um, courses. The author is a um, professional nurse and educator. So think about in what ways can you show that you care about students? Your caring should be presented throughout the journey of the course, but especially for the final exams, what can you do? And I think there are some um, ways to do. You may want to pay more attention to student needs, actively listen to, listen to student needs. And also you may think about alternative assessment these days. And you may want to ask a student to feedback about their exam experience and challenges. And also, I strongly encourage you to reflect on your own experience with the care. We unconsciously care for others in the way uh, we have been cared for. So I think a caring relationship with the teachers help a student to do better in learning. Yeah, we can move on to the next one, Judy. I think go back, back one. There we go. So I think, and this relates a lot to what Suna was just talking about, but um, when you're setting up your final exam, it's important to have a plan for how you will communicate with students um, and think about not just you know, you communicating ahead of time what the expectations are, which is really important to be more clear, more clear than normal, um, just because students will have anxiety about doing a, an exam online and it's important for them to understand what to expect. There's a lot to deal with with the technology setup, especially if you're using any type of proctoring tools that um, students can get anxious about that. And so just being very upfront about the expectations um, can be really helpful, but also during the exam and then after it's completed. So no matter how much preparation you have, there's always bound to be some type of technical glitch or someone's Wi-Fi has problems or a computer issue. Something can go wrong during the exam. And it's important to have uh, a space that you can use that students are well communicated told about ahead of time where students can contact you during the exam and you can deal with those issues as they arise and that you have a procedure for that. Um, so, I mean, some strategies the instructors have used is like to set up a, a room in Zoom where, instruct, where students can go in there and you'll have a TA or yourself in there that you can help troubleshoot problems or giving them contact information an email or a phone number. And, and having a strategy for how that'll work. And then also becoming, if you're doing any type of timed exam, becoming familiar with the tools in Canvas for how you could um, make small adjustments to a student's um, exam and see the history of what they've done so you can monitor those as they happen. Um, but another thing that's just very good to do up front is to engage students in a conversation about it about the exam and find out what are the issues that they're concerned about. And if you've done midterm exams, get their feedback on how that's gone for them, what have been their challenges, what they've liked, what they haven't liked. And you can use that information to help you. So I had a conversation with uh, Matt Yedlin, who's a professor in electrical engineering the other day. And he was telling me about in his course, what he did is um, he had two midterm exams. So two midterms and a final. And he said, after the first midterm exam, um, he created a discussion forum in the course and open it up immediately after the exam. And he described it as a pressure valve release that students got out of the exam and there's a lot of emotions and frustrations and um, nervousness about how they did and just had the students share what their experience was in there. And then students expressed a lot of concern about certain elements and they were able to address a lot of those for the second midterm. And then he said it went much better, but they still um, were able to get some constructive feedback and so he said he feels a lot better going into the final exam because they've been engaged with the students about this. And then it's also lessened the anxiety of the students because they feel like they've had um, more agency in contributing to uh, how the course is going and that their concerns are being heard. Okay, effective techniques to assess the student learning online. Well, I think this is more like 
uh, football thoughts. So today, I think many of you are interested in security pieces rather than more like a higher level thinking about you know, what we can do during this pandemic. But I think uh, to me, learning takes place in students' heads where it is invisible to others. It just means that learning must be assessed through performance. So what students can do with their learning, consider various ways to assess the student performance. So former, informal, high, low stake, anonymous, or public, individual, collective. Hopefully you can think about multiple choice uh, questions are so effective because you will get the result uh, immediately. But I think uh, during this time of the year, during this uh, pandemic situation, you may think about some equity and inclusion uh, aspect as well. If you have a final exam requires a thumb paper, open book essay, portfolio, or a group presentation, create rubrics to communicate expectations and reduce marking burden. And rubric is an effective assessment scoring tool that articulates expectations for the assignment or for the assessment. So I don't know, have you ever used the rubrics for your um, exams, like a final pro a project? Okay. So, and determine set of feedback strategies, instructor feedback or peer feedback to nurture student learning. I know even after a final exam, if you find there were specific areas that many students didn't do well, you can still highlight and explain them through, for example, um, Canvas announcement to reinforce the student learning, even if the course is almost over. Or if your final exam requires a thumb paper, you can encourage your student to use peer scholar in Canvas um, as an example. So for peer review, peer feedback, and student can incorporate the feedback into their final version. So feedback, feedback plays a critical role in student development, motivation, satisfaction. So to promote the student learning, you may need to consider content of feedback, amount of feedback, timing of feedback and revision opportunities. The next item I was thinking about was consider where equitable grading assessment can be added or integrated. Many faculty members believe that your assessment practices are fair and objective, but students' learning can be easily disrupted by various reasons these days. So many students may have their own challenges, problems. So equitable assessment is an important, important, particularly during this time. One of the ideas would be if you have any plan to have a portfolio as a final product, as a final project, then self-assessment can be part of the portfolio. That will help the student to reflect their own learning and progress. And I think involving students in the assessment process is a great idea. I believe there are a lot of uh, techniques and strategies to assess the student learning out there. I encourage you to visit CTLT online teaching program, OTP module, particularly module three is about design online assessment. And we have some so, key considerations. Yeah, so I think we've we've touched on a lot of these earlier in the approachability and focus on students section, but um, being very clear to students about what what you want, what the rules are, what the intent is and what your goals are for the final exam and then engaging them in conversation about it. So if you're um, using particular techniques that it can be helpful to get their, get their feedback, let them know up front and answer questions ahead of time, give them the opportunity to do that, um, to engage in conversation with you and address those concerns before the exam starts. Um, and then also, like I said previously, providing a space during the exam where they can reach you. And um, especially if you're using things like Proctorio and or lockdown browser, that if students run into technical problems, getting those to work, they need a, a space to contact you during the exam. And also, again, especially if you're using any type of additional software that adds to the complexity, setting up um, practice exams for students ahead of time, that they can use those, try them out um, in a low stakes situation with enough time that then they can 
deal with any issues that they have and let you know what those are. And, and I would urge you to check with your different uh, faculty support units because I know many of the different faculties have set up um, tools already that you can use. So I know like in the Faculty of Arts, there is a, um, there's a site set up that you, a Canvas site that you can just send students to and they log in and then it gives them the opportunity to practice with all the different um, invigilation tools they might run into. Yeah, I think it's um, relevant to what Jason said and also chat um, between Manuel and uh, Andrea. Yes, uh, more detailed information, instruction, communication, clear communication with the students will help a student to be successful in their final exam. So um, post tech support info. Um, if they have any issues during the exam, they need to go, they need to know where they need to go, right? So creating online exam support room. So sort of case as uh, two tiers exam support teams. One is a graduate student help the invigilation after having some training. And uh, next tier two uh, uh, support staff just to support particular proctorial and lockdown browser issues, more, more, high, more difficult technical support. So if a student has any problems at the beginning or during the exam, they know where to go, just a uh, headline. So te tech support info should be posted in advance and also post to specific rules that students are allowed or not allowed to use during the exam, for example, um, in in person class uh, in visual, during the invigilation, usually they didn't allow their calculators. But uh, within this environment, they allowed to use students are allowed to use a calculator, and they can have some snack even. But uh, they are not supposed to have a conversation with their peers until until exam finishes. So certain rules should be posted so that students are allowed to know, are aware of the know uh, what rules are um, they are supposed to uh, keep. And inform students of general technical tips for the exam. Using helpline is important, but I think they need a more general technical tips as well. So they should have reliable internet connection. They need to, if possible, sit uh, beside two routers and start to their laptop if they have any problems at the beginning and finally contact the helpline, et cetera. So as I mentioned before, overall instructors clear instruction information and communication with the student will help the student to be successful in their final exam. Any questions? And I need to follow the chat. Before we ask question, we just want to post this, this because I think this is um, one of us um, put the slide at the end. The primary of purpose of assessment is to improve students' learning. And I, I think we need to continue to keep this in our head as we develop our final exam 